hello, my Yarny friends. Welcome to Friday Fun Day with Sarah. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Today I have a really fun and easy project for you. And I think you're really going to enjoy this because you can get in your yarn stash and make these. Now this is a simple little bowl that we added a ribbon to and some fun little buttons. And this one is themed for Thanksgiving. And of course you can do whatever colors that you want. And the neat thing is, if you want to put candy inside, but you don't want to get the bowl sticky, you can use a coffee filter. Or you can just slip your favorite cereal bowl inside. Oh, and don't forget, the complete pattern with pictures is in that link that's provided down underneath this video in that description box. So what do we need to make one of these really nice, cute, and easy baskets. So we're going to be using a bulky number five yarn. Now I wasn't sure what this yarn was because I just had rolled it in a couple of balls and so I had to look it up. And it is a Charisma by Loops and Thread that you find at Michael's and it's a variegated brown and you can see it's got some beiges and browns and some darker colors in there. And I think it works out perfect for this basket. Now, you can get in your yarn stash and use any bulky weight number five yarn for this project. And we're going to be stitching today with our K hook. That's a 6.50 millimeter crochet hook. All right. Now, I've got some ribbon here. I used a white ribbon on this one, but on the next one, I'm going to use this brown. And this is just an inexpensive ribbon from Hobby Lobby. Let's see, it is a 3 16 inch. The truth is the width of the ribbon, the thickness of it is totally up to you. You could use anywhere from the super thin ones to maybe a half inch just whatever you have on hand. And I thought this would look really pretty with the brown because I'm sticking with my Thanksgiving theme. And I've got some buttons out here and it's up to you. I put two on this one. You can put two or three or just one, whatever you want to put on there. And remember, you could do this in Christmas colors, Easter colors, Valentine's Day, and add whatever buttons that you want. They're decorative, so they aren't going to need to go in and out of a buttonhole or anything like that. All right. We're going to be using our needle for weaving in ends and of course sewing on the button. And you may need a smaller button if you're using a button that has small, um, you'll need a smaller needle if you're going to be using buttons that have small um, hole openings. Keep that in mind too. And then of course your scissors. The other things I have out here is a coffee filter. This is just your basic size that goes in your regular coffee maker. And what that does is, let me pull these candies out. I put a bowl in here, and this is just your basic cereal bowl. But if you don't want to use this, and you want to use this, you can put this inside the bowl, and it will keep things from getting sticky. You might want to use it as a nut bowl. And if you don't have nuts that are still in the shell, it might get nasty. Now, this yarn can com be completely thrown in the wash machine, and I um, would probably throw it in with my kitchen towels wash it and dry it because it is just an acrylic yarn. Um, so you can keep that in mind as well, but I don't like it when it gets sticky. And so I use a coffee filter if I'm using candy or nuts or something in my bowl that will leave a residue. All right, just a couple of hints of things that I like to do. All right, let's get started. So we're going to begin with that slip knot. And we're going to chain five. We'll join this chain five into a circle. So we'll put the tail of yarn over our hook and pull that through and snug that down and tie that stay knot. Now, if you would like to use the magic circle or another method of making your ring, you certainly can. We're going to go in, pull up a loop and chain three. And the chain three counts as our first double crochet. And so we're going to stitch nine more. So we have a total of 10. 
whoops, getting hung up on a string there. There we go. All right, so counting my chain three and two, that's three, four, five, six. I am stitching over this tail of yarn. That's so I can close that hole up when we're done. We do not want a hole in the bottom of our basket. Grab that tail. We don't want that. <laughs> Alrighty. I think these little baskets also would look nice on your dresser or in your bathroom to hold like maybe your rings or your jewelry or something or maybe some spare change. All right, let's see how many I made. I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I have ten. We're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now at this point, I like to go ahead and turn this over, gently pull on that string, grab my needle, and go ahead and weave this in. If you want to do this at the end, you certainly can. I always say that. But I really like to go ahead and get it done now, then I don't have to worry about it. One less thing I have to do at the end. All right, we'll go ahead and clip that. All right, so now for row one, we have 10 double crochets. We join to our chain three and chain three. All right, let's do row two. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, and we're going to double crochet in the same stitch as that chain three. And now we're going to place two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. We wanna make the bottom of our uh, basket nice and flat so it sits nicely. So we're stitching two double crochets in each of our double crochets around and then we'll join back to our chain three. I stitched two double crochets in each of my stitches around so we have 20 double crochets. All right, so I'm going to join to the top of my chain three and chain three. And now for row three, we're basically going to do the same thing we did on row two. We're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And again, stitching it this way with the uh, two stitches in each double crochet is going to give us a nice flat bottom to our bowl, and it's gonna make it sit really nice. So I'm stitching two double crochets in each of my double crochets around. And then we'll join back to our chain three. I stitch two double crochets in each of my double crochets around. So I have 40 double crochets. I joined my chain three and chained three. We're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three again. Only on this row, we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the next three. Now I'll double crochet two times or two double crochets in the same stitch. and then one double crochet in the next three. One, oops, there we go, two and three. Two double crochets in the next, one and two. One double crochet in the next three. One, two and three. This yarn keeps getting stringy. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this. Stitch two double crochets in the next stitch and one double crochet in the next three, 
and repeat that all the way around and again join back to our chain three. I have completed row four stitching two double crochets in the next, one double crochet in the next three and repeat all the way around and you're going to have 50 double crochets. All right now we're going to start working up and working the sides of our basket. So we joined our chain three and chained three. Now on row five we're going to be working in the back loops only. All right and so you can see our loops along here. Our loops on this side are our back loops. The loops that are facing you are your front loops and we're going to be stitching in the back loops only and we're going to be stitching one double crochet in each of those back loops. So we'll go right in that back loop there we go and we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of those back loops only. And you'll know that you're doing it correctly if you see that line of stitches right across here because we're only working in the back loop not through both loops. All right so we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the back loops only working all the way around and again joining back to our chain three. So I completed row five stitching one double crochet in each of my double crochets around stitching in the back loop only and you'll have this line that goes all the way around and that's going to help your basket sit nice and tidy. But we're going to continue for two more rows to repeat row five. We're going to join to our chain three, chain three and then one double crochet in each of the back loops around. And we're going to do this for two more rows. So we're repeating row five for two more rows, stitching one double crochet in each, join chain three and stitching in the back loops only for two more rows. I repeated row five two more times which is just one double crochet in each, stitching in those back loops only and I really love the effect of how it looks. It looks really cool. All right after you join your chain three after row seven we're going to chain four instead of three. One, two, three, and four. Okay we're going to skip the next double crochet and then double crochet in the next and chain one. Now we're not stitching in the back loops only now and what we're doing is we're making a spot for our ribbon to go through. All right, so double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, and double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, and double crochet in the next. And we'll do this working all the way around. And like I said, we're going to use that to thread our ribbon through. We'll do this all the way around and then we'll join back to the third chain of our beginning, chain four. So I've stitched that all the way around, double crochet, chain one, skip one, all the way around. We're going to join to that chain three of that beginning, chain four, with a slip stitch and only chain one. <clears throat> now this last row, we're going to single crochet in each double crochet and single crochet in each of the chain one spaces. So single crochet in the double crochet, single crochet in the chain one space, single crochet in the double crochet, and single crochet in the chain one space. And we'll do this all the way around for a nice top edge of our basket. It's just going to make it a lot sturdier. single crochet in the double crochet, 
single crochet in the chain one spaces all the way around and then join back to our first single crochet. So I have single crocheted in each double crochet and chain one space. I'm going to join to my first single crochet with a slip stitch, cut our yarn. I'm going to go into the next loop and pull that loop to the inside and tie off. And now we have a nice looking basket. I do need to weave this end in, so I'll take a couple seconds and weave this in, and then I'll show you how to add your ribbon and your buttons. All right, so what you're going to need to do is cut off about a 24 to 30 inch piece of your ribbon. And now we're just gonna lace it through. And what I do is I take my crochet hook and I, here's the back, so I want this to be the front. And so I'll just kind of go like this. And I'll grab that ribbon and pull it through. Now, if you don't want to use ribbon and you want to just make a chain out of your yarn, you certainly can. Or if you want to make it out of another kind of yarn, another color or whatever, you can do that too. And there are lots of options for ribbons. And of course, thicknesses and lengths, that's all totally up to you. Oops. One more time here. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're almost back up here. Let's see, we'll go in here and here. All right. So I'm pulling the wrong string. All right, we don't want to pull our basket. We want it to stay nice and loose. And it's up to you again, if you want your ribbon to be longer, you can cut a longer ribbon. All right, so I'm gonna kind of fold that so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to make a knot first. And that's just gonna hold the ribbon where I want it. All right, and now I'm just gonna make my bow. And I like to do the double dog ear bow. I think it makes a nice pretty bow. And of course, you can have your bow as big as you want or as small as you want. I kind of like it when they're hanging off a little, but I'm gonna clip the ends of these so we get a nice edge. That one's already pointed, but we'll do like that, nice edge. So there's my bow. And of course, this would look lovely with like a nice gold bow or red. You know, it's just up to you what you want to do. Now, I have grabbed a smaller needle because I'm going to use these two for my buttons. And I also decided just to grab a piece of medium weight number four yarn to sew those buttons on. All right, now I want to place them right above the bow on this double crochet stitch. But I want to look at my shanks to see how they're moving across the back. Okay, so we want to go this way. And when I'm sewing on buttons onto knitting or crochet or fabric that's really bumpy and movie, I like to make that loop. All right, so now I'm going to put this little leaf on. So I'll go back in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this one to the back because it's in the way. So I want to get it out of my way. There we go. All right, so there's one. And I'm going to sew my little acorn just a little bit lower. So I'm going to make a little loop just a little bit lower. And then we'll sew the acorn on. Now remember, these are not for buttoning and unbuttoning. They're for decoration. So the amount of loops that you put on to sew them in place is up to you. Oh, I like that. That's really cute. All right, so I'm going to go through that shank or that 
little bump on the back. So I've got them all clumped up there together. I really like how that looks. All right, so I'm going to go to the back. And we're going to tie those in place so those buttons don't come off. It seems like the place I lose my buttons is in the wash machine. So I want to make sure they're on there nice and secure because I know I'm messy. My grandkids are messy. We're all messy sometimes. And so I want to be able to put these through the laundry. All right. Now you can move your bow up if you want to. You can have it down. It's kind of up to you how you want to do that. But I think that looks really cute and festive for Thanksgiving and fall decorating. And again, you can make this in Christmas colors, Easter colors, spring colors, you know, whatever you want for your basket. And remember, if you're going to put sticky candy in there, just slide a coffee filter in there and it'll keep the inside nice and neat. Or you can slide a cereal bowl in there and it'll help hold its shape. And so there are lots of fun things that you can do with these cute little baskets. Change out the bows, change out the buttons, change out the yarn, and you've got lots of different looks. I love them both, and they're both going to be on my Thanksgiving table. One other thing I wanted to mention is I always get people asking me if they can put candles in these fabric or yarn bowls. No, you can't. Okay? This is acrylic yarn, and acrylic yarn and fire do not go well together. What you can do is get some of those little tea lights. You can find those at the dollar store and dollar general and some of the inexpensive places for less than two dollars you can get three or four of them and they work really nice you can put the little tea light has a little battery and use that okay but never ever put a lit candle inside a yarn bowl or yarn container aren't these little baskets the cutest thing i just love them and they have so many uses Put your coffee filter inside and you can put candy or nuts and not mess up your basket. Put your cereal bowl inside and you've got a nice hard surface for putting other things in there. I always say candies. Candies are best in baskets. But remember, do not put a lit candle inside your acrylic bowls, okay? Use a little tea light. Like I said, you can pick those up inexpensively, lots of different places. And use those if you want to use this as a handle okay all right so that is our little easy ribbon baskets aren't they fun they're definitely going to be on my thanksgiving table i'll see you next friday for friday fun with sarah <laughs>